All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the Paradise League Hans Grand Finale. I'm Brick CPK, joined by What You Got, and we're in game two. Obviously, not much of a break. You need to right there, both teams ready to get back into it. And you made an interesting comment while we're off the uh, off the air there during the break. That uh, so apparently Team Doghouse, you could you would argue is the favorite in the series. I mean, it's only one game, so don't want to take too much away from it. But mm -hmm. Doghouse is the favorite, so looking forward to their response. Yeah, throughout the five cycles where the teams battled to get here, Doghouse was, I think, the clear favorite. They they have been the most dominant team, I think, for a while now. Um, so I, I don't think the game one is going to phase them too much. Again, we'll have to wait and see here in game two how they respond. And that's in, in any sport, a great team always responds to a, a, a defeat with something uh, up their sleeve. So I'm looking forward to see what Doghouse brings uh, here to the table in game two. Well... It's going to be a Magmus opener for our Team Tim. So we have that answer so far. What were the bands like? I didn't really address those in the first game, but we got Draconis, Valkyrie, Dr. Repulsor, Forsaken Archer, Tremble, and Sir Bensington going to be uh -huh. banned out. So as far as responses from the last game, I guess you could argue Sir Bensington really the only one technically. That was a different band there. Yeah, so Snooki banned out the Sir Bensington because Team Tim has first pick, and I, I think that they... I don't know if they first picked it last game, but they, they did get it uh, uh, in in the beginning of their draft, so mm -hmm. they they realized that that's a hero, as I said last game, that both teams like to run a lot, so it, it, it's a comfortable pick for both teams, so it makes sense to, to ban that one away. Um, I'm not sure what that left open, because as you said, we didn't really discuss the bans from last game, but the other five bans are more or less all player hero targeted bands. So they're just heroes that these teams play incredibly well. And we, we know that from watching all of the cycles. So it is really not too much to comment uh, on the bands other than that Sir Bensington that we saw last game. It might have been Lodestone, to be honest. For some reason, that's standing out to me. Obviously, we see the pick coming out here from the side of uh, Team Doghouse. But either way, they got Lodestone to go with Nymphora. That's a fun combo right there. Moira Torture on the other side. So things looking pretty uh, clean across the board. And mm -hmm. good idea of what they're going to be searching for. A lot of team fight potential, of course, from the side of Team Tim. Um, but yeah, the Nymphora. Let's talk about, let's talk about this Nymphora a little bit. Uh, oh, this this hero is a mod. I mean, this hero is like S tier support hero. This okay. Throughout the uh, cycles, we've seen blind band Nymphoras and first pick Nymphoras like all, all the way through. I mean, uh, this hero she she trilanes insanely well with her heal. Uh, once she gets like level two of the heal pod, you cannot man up in a trilane three v three because that ability just turns trilanes she has a stun and then uh the, the big thing about the hero is the teleport global presence throughout uh post laning phase and end game phases of the game this hero can just rip you apart uh with coordinated team play so it's it's a monster of a support uh i love to see it in the game because it means we're gonna have a lot of action and stuff's gonna be happening all over the map so we'll probably have to keep our eyes peeled for those nymph tps but uh i look over there at the side of um team tim and it's the classic, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of strategy. They, they basically are running the same thing, minus the Magmus uh, is supplementing the rally that they had last game, whereas Doghouse had the Magmus for themselves. Um, but again, Volca plays a really nasty Magmus position for just like his rally, so I'm expecting him to be on top of his rotations in uh, the early game stages to get his teammates going with uh, some good farm in the post laning phase. And it's looking pretty good for both sides so far with the drafts. Yeah, I'm pumped to see this Nymphora kind of going off what you were saying. It's, Nymphora is one of those heroes that in a pub setting, like the, the theory of what you can potentially do is great, but it it just it feels like it's so hard to execute, right? Especially when you need this communication. If you're not going to be on the same page as your teammates, that teleport, the stun timing could be like it could just be bad. But in these pro atmospheres where obviously there's money on the line and you'd expect these people to be a lot more coordinated. Nymphora, I, I can certainly see why is considered one, of, if not the strongest support out there. So, um, yeah, lo looking forward to seeing the, the Nymphora plays, certainly. Yeah, and it's, then you pair that with a Lowstone, who's uh, who's really good at like nuking out waves really fast with his head smash and rocket drill. He just clears the wave, and then he sits in trees and sets up. And, you know, uh, whenever, whenever you have a Nymphora, you always want to have those split-pushing heroes that can just nuke out the waves and force the enemy team to react, sit on a creep wave, and then you can just pick them off when they go to defend uh like their towers and whatnot across the map mm -hmm. so it's a it's a good uh pairing with the nymphora maybe not to be tping with the nymphora but to kind of 
that up for the other heroes that they're going to be picking uh, coming up. Well, speaking of that, the bands have been finished, and now we got them sitting on this third pick. Start, definitely thinking about it quite a bit. The Gladiator, Gemini, Electrician, Defiler, Adrenaline, and Corrupted Disciple were the uh, following bands to happen there. So now it's going to be five more picks remaining, three for the side of Doghouse, of course. But yeah, still thinking about this third one quite a, quite a bit, spending uh, that reserve time on the 50 seconds and counting. Is there... Yeah, these two picks are very crucial for Doghouse because this is this is how they're going to start to steer their lineup. They're going to only have one pick left after this, and then uh, Team Tim gets to respond with their last two picks. So once they've seen four out of the five heroes uh, from Legion, they can say, oh, we know what you're kind of doing now, and we can kind of set up uh, appropriately. So they're on the side of Team Tim now, they are most likely going to be picking two solo lane heroes as we... Expect that to be, well, again, they didn't do the tri-lane last game, but the, that's usually what they do with the Torture, Moira, Magmus. So two two strong solo lane heroes or heroes that can be dual laned uh, is what they're going to be looking to pick up. And then we have Wretched Hag and Devourer. So I was actually eyeing the Wretched Hag. Uh, it is one of those like very uh, strong picks nowadays mm -hmm. that we definitely see get banned out a lot. It brings a lot of team fight presence. Um, it's it's very strong at scaling, so it's very hard to go late game against Hag because the bats are superior and go through Shunken. And if you can get Grimoire, Staff, Resto, stuff like that, uh, one to two Hag ultimates just burns the enemy carry down. So um, they're they're probably going to pick up two damage dealers, one being the Hag and one being the final pick once they see Team Tim's full lineup. And the Devo will be a second support for uh, Lilac. Uh, I saw him play that. I think it was in cycle five. He played a nasty devourer. I mean, it was hmm. nasty. Um, he was hitting blind hooks. He, uh, they ran it in a defensive tri lane, where I think they had uh, a shadow blade, which we saw last game. Um, so it was, it was just very, very good. I'm looking forward to see the Devo this game. And the real question is, which Devo skin is he going to use? I mean, Ooh. there's so many to choose from. Um, so. Last time, I think he used. Oh, not now you're making me feel like a fool. I th I think it was the gluttony one. Okay. Uh, so I, I I don't know which one he's gonna use this game, but as long um, as it's not the the squeaking feet, the clown one. Oh, the that's... clown one. Why are you hating on the clown one, Ricky? Because the squeaky a, feet, they get oh, so that, annoying. But but that's a reason in itself just to pick that skin. No, I'm leaving if he picks it. Oh no, we wouldn't want you to leave. I'll, I'll whisper him, don't pick it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the last picks for Team Tim were Geomancer and Kronos. So yeah. that's interesting, actually. I was not expecting a Geomancer pick. The Kronos makes a lot of sense because they need a damage dealer. Um, I, th I think that means they're going to run a Core Magmus, but we'll have to wait and see um, how they want to run this. This could be position 3 Magmus now with position 4 Geomancer. It could also just be like uh, a solo lane Geomancer, which wouldn't be out of the question. God, I'm just looking at this this AOE combination, the team fight. Even with just like two of the five heroes on this Hellborn side, it, it's going to be a pretty dramatic in introduction to these team fights. And he got all five potentially could line up one after the other and set a beautiful thing. So that, that, that that's definitely got me excited over here for Team Tim of what they could do with that Kronos carry. And the teammates around him, but that final pick, uh, Ravener, is going to be happening on the lead side. But real quick, actually, before we get to that, got to, of course, shout out our sponsors. Uh, first of all, being once again, Community Gaming. Uh, this tournament is brought to you by Community Gaming. Uh, they run weekly tournaments for Valorant, Super Smash Brothers, Hearthstone, etc. Uh, many, many games, both uh, traditional and even on the Web3 scene. Uh, community Gaming is an all-in-one platform to help supercharge events of all levels, from community grassroots to the Tier 1 professional events. It's free to sign up. Definitely check it out and look forward to uh, many different kind of events happening over there at communitygaming.io. You can join their Discord. Uh, also, Polydoge. Polydoge is a digital currency with one of the most vibrant communities on this powerful Polygon network. It offers a wide variety of fun, fun interactions to its holders in the form of NFTs, apps, airdrops, and access to different DeFi platforms ready to use on Polygon. Experience it for yourself at polydoge.com. Big shout out to our sponsors. Again, this $10,000 prize pool on the line wouldn't be possible without them. So there you go. All right, what you got? Ravener, that final pick. What are we thinking? 
Yeah, I'm um, actually, you know, I am surprised that they went for this kind of melee carry against the Kronos. I mean, they have uh, defensive tools with like the, the Devourer hook. If Evo is always in a good position, he can hook someone out of the Chrono field. Um, they have the Nymphora heal, which can maybe buy some time. But uh, Ravenor, it, it doesn't scream to me like big Kronos counter. So maybe they're just hoping that they can burst down the Kronos. Uh, with their heroes, because they do have the Lodestone Hag uh, to remove armor. And then Ravenor, if he's able to ever initiate, uh, he brings the punch with his power overwhelming. Uh, I, I know we've seen Ravenor's power time time after time, so... Oh, yeah. Um, I am going to be interested. Uh, they're probably going to run the Ravenor tri-lane. It looks like they are running it offensively. Um... So Kronos, maybe not the strongest <laughs> tri-lane hero. Ravenor, a little bit more aggressive. He's got the stun and the, the damage from the Stormblades. Uh, I am still not sure where we're seeing Geomancer and Magnus go. So we have to wait and see how they buy their items. Um, I think ideally you would want the Geomancer to be the support and the Magnus to be the farmer, the core farmer. And they do not put Imbaboy on the Torture this game, so they are putting it on their mid lane instead. So the Torture is a very flexible hero for Team Tim, as they, I think they have three Torture players. They even run it sometimes on Volca, but not here, of course. Sure. Um, so we see Lodestone going to the bottom lane. He will, I think, eventually be against somebody. Maybe the Magmus, who's you know got boots. You're, you're talking strategy. I'm focusing on cosmetics here. Oh, that's and we, good. We do, cosmetics we, we is got fun. The, the Devo Gluttony, I, bl I believe that, that is a Gluttony skin, right? That we're saying so. Well, the good news is you didn't have to leave because you didn't pick the clown yeah, avatar. He, and I did not I, whisper him by. He got the message somehow, thank God. By the, uh, by the, but by the way, <laughs> I'll say this the, 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 the Fat Nymphora is definitely one of my favorite skins in this game. <laughs> oh. I, I love this skin. So I know big a shout lot of out people to love it, but for some reason, I just am not a fan of this skin. I'm sorry to disagree with you. It's hilarious. <laughs> All right. So we talked about back... the squeaky slippers. I mean, this, this thing's got the, the wings flapping nonstop. It can get away with it because it's just hilarious. Four players oh. up here, by the way, for Team Tim, so they are making oh a God. statement. They want to bring down this Ravenor. There is a oh. hook on the Geomancer. If that actually hit the Ravenor, he goes back in, but he's going to go down. Well, If that to, actually hit the Ravenor, they would have maybe saved him. To that point, I think that's what he's going for, but Geomancer, whether that was on purpose or not, he blocked the hook and took it himself, so definitely... They did not expect four players to be there. <laughs> Obviously, that that that's a very sneaky play coming out from Team Doghouse. But it's plays like that that definitely set you up to obviously have a good landing phase and and ideally translates to a victory in the end. So very well played. Uh, Bloodlust by Team onto Kronos, by the way. That is the you oh, know yeah. I, I don't think they would have been sad if like maybe the support got it because then he could get like a fast grave locket or early boots. But to get the Bloodlust on the carry, I think it's safe to say that's always a good start for your team, especially. Right when the first creep wave hits, you already have 600 GPM on Chrono, so he could buy um, some laning phase items here. He can decide on like Iron Shield, the power supply for the tri lane, a Toxin Claw. He could even go early marchers. He's got all kinds of options now with that abundance of gold that he just got. We see a hook coming in on the Moira, and right away, Doghouse, no fear, brings the fight back to Team Tim. That's what you love to see, is they even it up one, one to one. And that's certainly the potential of what a Devo brings, especially in a Traverses trial lane. You know, it allows you to get that set up on somebody. And in that case, happens to be the Mora. And Mora is definitely the best target, right? Because both, especially with Kronos getting level one time leap, and then Magnus, of course, has his Lava Surge, so they could both get away, but not Mora, really. Yeah, definitely a good target for them to aim, as uh, you pointed out. Uh, they can't really keep the Mora alive once he's on top of all three. So, Lodestone gonna be one versus one against Geomancer. He had the early creep advantage with Geomancer starting top for the first blood. So I expect Lodestone to do very well down here. And uh, even if you know, even if this was Geomancer down here from the start, Azov is like a notoriously very, very good Lodestone player. I expect big things from him this game. In the mid lane, we have the Torture versus Wretched Hag, which I, I think is a pretty even matchup. We see Fa on Hag already doing really well. He is 12 and 5 against 10 and 0 Torture. Uh, but Torture gets his bottle delivered. He's going to get the first rune of the game, being the regeneration. So that will hopefully assist him um, with creep kills in the mid lane. 
Coming back. How is that mid lane going, by the way? 14 to 5 hag as Lodestone. Okay, just taking some pressure down here at the bottom lane. I want to make sure we weren't missing a kill. Uh, mm -hmm. 14 and no, 15 5 Wretched Hag versus a 10 and 0 Fortress. So, yeah, is the advantage for the Hag as Fall's going in. Fall wants to kill him. He dodges the stun, the scream, a couple Return. auto attacks. The Ranger Rune taken off immediately. Bottom charges will keep Torture alive. So, Fall doing a lot of pressure, though. Take some tower hits himself, but still really keeping Torture at bay over there in the mid lane. I gotta say, the big thing for me there is that he makes Torture use the Regen Rune and he doesn't allow himself to get spell spam. Top, top lane, we have an initiation in the tri lane, and I think both sides are going to hold and any engagement. But yeah, he forced the regen out from Torture and was able to cancel it, because that regen could have gave him a huge lane advantage if he was able to nuke Ag down repeatedly. So Fa yeah. recognized that, and he played that very well uh, to bait that out. I was actually watching the bottom lane too in a one versus one while that tops exchange was happening back and forth. Geomancer almost falling to the low, so managed to dodge the rocket drill though to survive. And he has to go all the way back to base, but still, at least he uh, stays alive right there. So game two, essentially picking up where game one left off. Just plenty of action. These teams not afraid to brawl. And speaking of that, Wretched Hag and Torture going at it again. Is Hag going to go in? I thought for a second he was, but uh, thinks better of it. That's that level 3 sonar scream that was coming off cooldown, but decides to play it safe there. The lowstone's already room. almost up to 400 GPM. You compare that to the 150 of Geomancer. That's a very good sign for Doghouse. Top lane, Moira got on. The Zeal stun at the last second helps get the kill. The heal also for Devo. Doesn't even need the damage on Kronos. Time no, leap in 8 seconds. seconds. Yeah. They decide not to go for the dive, though, because Magnus battery had a hook. Lot of surge. Oh, oh, very, yeah. very close. There's Solid a ball lightning, battery. though. Ball lightning in, but there's the time lead from Chrono, so the cooldown coming up just a time. Yeah, if he hits that hook, a different story, but unable to connect that one, a difficult one at that. But man, the the the, the forcing blows just continue. And now actually Devo. Team Tim. There's the shard put on the Chronos, and they're gonna yeah. go for this Devo kill. And here's the nymph pod coming out, gonna look for a counter. Oh God. That, that Nymph Pod is so good. Not only is it a beautiful heal, but the damage it puts out, the huge turn potential, and they kill the Magnus in the long run as a result. Mid lane, there's just some more exchanging back and forth. Oh, but yeah. Go down here. But not will they be able to get the counter because there's a ball lightning up very uh -oh. soon? Nymphora trying to let it line up the double zeal stun. He does fall. And Ravager's just not beefy enough yet. He's still only level three. Of course, doesn't have that power overwhelming, so not really scaling and can't really do much more damage than that. In fact, might be in trouble still. They're going in for more. TP is coming out from Devo. Devo, not much you can do at that point, though, as Magnus smashes his face in. The heal zeal stun combo, but there is plenty of support still here. Mora double stun himself with the shards. Kronos. That's a oh, time loop. Are they really the going for this? The lava yeah, surge. Great timing from Volka there. Nobody ends up dying behind this tower. And he's out. I mean, that just that just kept happening. But I, I suppose the Hellborn team, uh, Team Tim, they, they they win it in the end, all that exchanging. Although, oh, Magnus is found by Wretched Hag, trying to be sneaky and eventually get out of there. But Hag hunts him down. So Fall is definitely the shining star for the Legion side. How about that? 420 plus gold per minute right now. Look at the difference between the two solo lanes oh, from yeah. Doghouse to the two solo lanes from Team Tim. Uh, we have 380 and 415 GPM as Lowstone might... He, he's got the head smash up if he wants to channel the Shatterstorm. Oh, but they're baiting this Geomancer's here. It's gonna be a kill on the Torturer, actually. Yep, And he can't get in range for the head smash. No, Hag takes him out with the Sonar Scream instead. We'll let Hag get the kill. Lowstone definitely dying. Just gonna do as much damage to the head smash on a Magnus. Gets him low. That's Hag has a blink. Illusion Rune, which gives him low <gasps> cooldowns here. He actually misses the Magnus. Geomancer has stunned in two seconds. Mm. I think he can chase after him, though. Yeah, he can. Sonar Scream attack, kill. And actually, the Geomancer is the better kill uh, over the Magmus because he is the farmer, so... Fa is doing a lot of work here in game two early on. Already 480 gold per minute. Um, and during all this, it's Kronos is by himself now for the top lane of Zimba Boy, so this is a completely different early laning phase than it was in game one, uh, favoring Team Doghouse, as everything across the board is going great for them. You really talked about those solo lanes especially. Absolutely dominating and following the way. 480 gold per minute now. You mentioned the scalability of this wretched hag, and it's definitely getting their top lane, though. They're going in on a Ravner. 
Team Tim knows they need some kills, and the Crystal Field will make that happen. They take him out, but here comes Hag, porting in, blinking in the get blast. Down goes Kronos. They want more, though. Hag is ready in five seconds with another blink. Maybe a hook? Yeah, a little too long of a cooldown for now. But they ain't stopping. Why would they? Fall wants more. Goes back in. We missed the lava surge. He gets pulled back by the hook as well. The steel stun connects. The heal pod eventually going to help finish off more. They did take up a Magnus. It is a disaster for Team Tim Old now. disaster for Team Tim. Great TP from the hag to get all those counter kills. And then Lodestone's going to get a free tower kill bottom lane. After all that, or he might get it. It's getting... Okay, the vulnerability. Yeah, he's going to get it here. Well, 5,000 gold lead now. And, uh, I mean, I guess top lane ain't going to stop, though. Why would it? Let's just keep the action going. Devo, mana centers up and making his life difficult. So at least they kill the Devo. But Kronos, his farm is... Uh, it's, it's not doing the best right now. Yeah, and the, he, he's not farming the creeps, and they're killing the Devo, which, which is okay, but it's not good for Chrono specifically. And I don't know if we touched on it, but the bottom tier one tower fell yep. to, to the Legion, so that's gonna bump up their golden XP lead by a bit. They're up to four K, three K as we approach nine minutes here. So that is a pretty sizable lead here uh, early on. And we see a large part of that due to the Hag and the Lodestone both doing very, very well. Uh, anything clutch going to be coming out soon? No, it's still, uh, again, across the board, really not the best farm right now for the Hellborn side. So trying to recover in any which way they can. This Magmus, it's going to be a while before any sort of... Oh, blind hook from Devo. He hits the Kronos. Yikes. Crystal Field connects on the two. Out. They might try to get return kills here with the mass ports coming in. Definitely trying. Will they get it? It's a question. They get one, and the answer is yes. Nuki goes down as well. They want more now. And Nymph 4 has got to get caught a little too fat and slow there. Dude falls. Double tap. Going to be happening for Torturer. So finally, finally something on the way of Team Do or Team Tim, that is, on the Hellborn side as they get those three kills. They rotated their entire team up there. So while this is going on, they're getting some tower pressure on the mid lane. But they're still rotating four players now to mid lane, and this could be some kills onto Doghouse in the mid lane. All right. Oh, well, no. Wretched Hag comes in, though, but the Kronos down. Kronos field down on top of that Wretched Hag. He'll zeal stun as well. The heal heals him up, but Wretched Hag still locked down. The stuns are too much. No BKB yet, of course, and down falls Wretched Hag. Ravenous going to go down as well in the midst of it. Kronos might get ran down with the Night stun. stun from Torture. Oh, the heal, though, he bursts it immediately and it sets up the kill onto the Kronos, who thought he had to oh, get away, but now Devo's on, dead. Unlucky hook there from Devo, and they're all so low on the side of Team Tim. Nymphora, oh. clutch battery. There is no stun from the Magmus, and he might be just fine here. Yeah. Chain reaction misses. So dude actually makes a nice, uh, nice juke there in the trees. But you know what? I, I'm looking at the, it was upwards of 5,000 gold lead before all that fighting happened. It's down to 1,300. I, I mean, they, they are absolutely recovering. In yeah, that was an insane fight from Team Tim. Torture landed, I think, multiple like double stuns in this fight and the Chrono Field completely uh, started that fight off very good for them locking down. Uh, I think Ravenor even got caught in there as well as Lodestone, if I'm not mistaken. They, they took out some key, some key heroes really early on, mm -hmm. and Fa also died early on without having... He didn't have Bat Blast up as well, so it was not a really a good fight for Doghouse to take, I think, in the first place. Yeah, if he can specifically hit that Kronos Field on Wretched Hag, then these fights absolutely have the potential to go the way of, uh, of Team Tim. And he doesn't even necessarily need to kill him in the beginning of it, it just... The, the way it delays the Hag in the fight, and it really kind of sets up the... Uh, that whole momentum tour for the for the Hellborn team, but okay, top lane. It's been a, it's been a minute, so another fight's about to break out. Yeah, it's already had 29 hero kills in 12 minutes. That's actually insane. Ravener trying to bait something. Magnus is nearby. Lodestone here though as well. Shatterstorm is ready. I mean, everything's ready essentially. Chronos yeah, here is not the, with the Geo stock. Trying to get some information. Here comes Torture also roaming in with a Veiled Rod, so we basically are going to have a 5 versus 5, and here we go! The Rock Drill in, the Vortex. 
Kronos field is down for five more seconds. The heal is going to be able to time leap away. So now has it up. Wretched Hag is joining the party, though, as well. So we have a true five versus five. Oh, Stone Shadow take is going to the bats. Take out Kronos. Does he have a buyback? He does not. So no buyback from him. Avoid to make something happen to this fight. The loose warrior as well. And now Torture at the tower. Just trying to hug it as close as he can. He's dealing some good damage right here. He avoids the hook, but it doesn't matter. Down goes Torture. And it is a big fight for Doc Alsa, just like that. Now we look at the gold lead again, 7,000. Wow. That's a jump. Yeah, that was a really good fight from Doghouse. And you, you were talking about it. The chrono, Chronosphere or Chronofield was just about to come up. So Doghouse took this fight with like perfect timing. Uh, whereas uh, Team Tim, like, they did not want to take that fight whatsoever, having that big cooldown not available to them. And Hag, Hag got a really good kill in the trees. Uh, Steve misses the hook mid lane. They could be in trouble, actually, if they can catch him maybe with a dig stun, but they're they're not committing to it, so I think he's going to just walk away. Or actually, is he? He's going to run into Magmus here. Yeah, but is this really going to work? You have an Infora, you have Ravener nearby, it's there's Devo. A there's a hook ready. It's going to guess, and unfortunately, nobody's in that area. And that that's smart, though, right, of Team Tim? Because that's what I was getting at. They would need to commit quite a bit to try to get that Devo kill, and it might not have been worth it in the end. So they uh, they, they play the safe route. I mean, you're down 7,000 gold, though. Hey, we've seen a, that fluctuate before in this game and go back the other way so certainly still possible but it really starts with this chronos needing to get some good farm he needs his first big item and he still is a bit of ways from that also something like a blink on magmas traditionally would uh be a key item as well right he has about 1200 gold saved up himself so so give them another three minutes of no dying you know maybe maybe something could happen here but as i say this Evo, team doghouse oh, they know this too he guessed on the hook again that would have been something if Magnus actually stunned away and went into the hook. But yeah, you're talking about portal key timings. Lodestone, we talked about how he had the great laning stage start. He does have two deaths, so he's kind of slowed down from his very, very good lane. But uh, another 400 gold, and he's going to have the first blink of the game. And Magnus, being the second support, it's going to be a little bit harder for him to get his gold. As we have Arcane Vortex up in the top lane, stalling Hag. But Kronos, he has the Chrono Field. Oh! Oh, what's happening? He's going around. He's trying to hit both of them, trying to get out and survive, letting the teammates do the work. And there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the Wombo Combo. Why, well, you never want to count out this team. Is up here, I think. They want to, like, maybe re engage, but nobody's showing up in the creeps. So, yeah. Really good uh, AoE team fight synergy coming in from Team Tim. I think that started off with Magmus and uh, Geomancer lining up their spells together really nicely. They got the Hag and the Devo kills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 34 hero kills in 15 minutes, no big deal. That is more than two per minute as my math hopefully is correct. Your so NA we math are is on correct. par with the traditional two, two kills per minute ratio. Whew. But, I mean, obviously that's why you always want to look at much more information Ooh, than lane. just hero Smoke kills. Devo and Nymphport coming in. He just barely missed the hook. He's going to try to bait this, I think. Oh, but Lowson actually yeah. shows himself. I don't well, know if these... he meant to do that. Are there usually trees here, or were they destroyed? I um, actually don't know. <laughs> no, I think that that's the no, way they're supposed to No, it is usually open. Be. You're right. Okay. Um, I thought they were destroyed for a second, so it kind of like got him exposed but no you're right i'm almost a bit surprised that they didn't just uh try to bait out the devo try to get chronos to maybe use his leap yeah. and then channel up shatterstorm and go but uh unfortunately the devo hook missed that would have been uh a very good chance of killing the chronos <clears throat> speaking of chronos he has an alacrity band so uh, what is that the thunderclaw yeah, he's going to go Thunderclaw and most likely Elder Parasite following it up. It's just a really good duo of items for him to bolster up his attack damage, or sorry, attack speed, and with the lightning procs, he can bring people down pretty quickly in the Chrono Fields. Um, and then traditionally you go into like Geobane, uh, stuff like Shark <coughs> Resto later on. So that's going to be kind of his item route, uh, at least what I expect for him to do. Magnus has enough for a portal key now. So he sure does, purchase. and that's a 17-minute portal key on the second support. That's a great timing from Volca. Uh, time and time again, he always seems to find the farm, uh, even with already having the 
grave locket, the battery, and the wind whistle. So he has some buildup items there on top of the portal key as well. It's not like a straight up portal key with striders. He's doing very good. Nymphora's teleport just came off cooldown. I've also been seeing Hag. Uh, Fall's been doing a great job stacking his own camps over here in the jungle, taking them out with a sonar scream, and keeping up that very efficient farm, nearly 500 gold per minute. And that's already mm -hmm. turned into a Gnome's Wisdom, a Sacrificial Stone, and we'll see eventually the Grim War. I'm, I'm guessing we'll see. We'll yeah, so too. he... This is a very traditional Hag build where you get a bunch of build up into a Gnome's, and then you go into the Grim War. It's going to lower his cooldown for uh, Bat Blast and bulk up the damage. So everything's pretty normal here, I would say. And again, Foss having a great game. He's got eight kills, almost 500 GPM. Uh, it did have a couple of deaths to slow it, slow his uh, momentum down slightly. But mid lane, we have Magmus getting taken out here. I think that that was a hook starting it off. I did miss it, but great job from Devo uh, to set up a kill. Might be able to get some tower pressure now. As Team 10 was grouped up four out of their five players down bottom for that tier one tower. Yeah. So, well, that's kind of to that point. It's one of those, all right, so sure we lost our Magmus, but, you know, we were able to just freely push that bottom tower as a result. We're opening up more space for this Kronos and boy to farm now. So kind of trying to, you know, the, the cup half full perspective from the side of uh, Team Tim right there. But still a lot of room to make up. 5,300 gold lead remaining for Team Doghouse. They're trying to bait out this lodestone, you can tell once again. You're in the mid lane as the top tower will just actually fall to the creep wave. Yeah, that's big. So you can tell that um, Team Tim was scared to go up there and defend it. Um, and I think for good reason. We've seen Doghouse kind of in between the middle and top area uh, pressuring quite a lot. We see Ravenor. He's got the Mighty Blade following up Elder Parasite, so he's going to go straight into Shrunken Head, which I definitely agree with this game. I think it's the right call from Zanuki to go into the early defensive item, going up against this mass chain of stuns from Hellborn. As we see potential fight brewing here in the mid lane with Geostock botting out their position with the, the stock. Ravener off to the side, farming the jungle. The hook attempt is not going to connect. Here we go. The double two. Kronos field. The wretched act to be the key. The heal is not going to be enough. Hacks down. And a big opening right now for the Hellborn side. Vortex slowing it down. Wretched act does have a buyback if he chooses to use it. Magma stun out, though. They did lose one themselves. No, they actually get another into Ravener. They also take out Devo, and now they're chasing out Lodestone as well. He's trying to get away with the rocket drill. Nymphora. Also trying to escape in the mid lane as Lodestone gets out, but three kills, no deaths for this, uh, this Hellborn team. And again, it's the Kronos Field, specifically the Hag. If they catch the Hag in these Kronos Fields, it feels like there's all the chance in the world for this Hellborn team to win these fights. Breaky, this was a ward of sight placed by the carry himself, Imbaboy. The Kronos places his own ward in his jungle. He spots out both the Ravenor and the Hag. I mean, that was about as perfect as it can get to catch the two best heroes uh, from Doghouse in the Chrono Field and they bursted down the Hag right away. That was very, very nice to see uh, coming out from the side of Team Tim there. Yeah, this Geomancer continues to be slippery, running into a couple in the Legion jungle and ends up uh, digging away and then using that new portal key of his, so well played. But yeah, I, there's the other Parasite. The Let's see who's coming up there. This is only one guy gonna be porting. Shatterstorm catches Kronos oh. right away, but they were baiting this. Yep. Now they're not going to turn. They're just going to keep Kronos alive, and they'll be happy with that. Hook is going to whiff, so that's uh, in a sense a victory for the for the Hellborn team, really. Continue to farm in the jungle. Looking at Geomancer bottom lane. He does use the dig, and he's going to get his PK stopped here. This could be a kill on the Geomancer. Yeah. Crystal Field. Dodge the ball lightning, but no chance in the end for Taipei. Very good patience there from Fa. Waits for the dig stun to be used before going in. And, you know, both sides have had great moments this game. It's been very back and forth so far. We actually still see Doghouse in the lead of 4,000 gold and 4,000 XP. But I got to say, this game feels dead even. Uh, I, at the moment. I, yeah, I'm glad you said it like that. We'll, we'll get to that in just a second because now Lodestone, he's going to be gone on the hook, though, and Kronos locking him down. No, but the Vortex 
That's what the Vortex is good for. Kodosfield is ready as well. And Nymphora off to the side. We're not going to see the Kodosfield coming out. Not necessarily there. They get the free kill on a Diva. There's a Kodosfield on a Lodestone. Nymphora oh, going to do what he can. Down here. He's in trouble. He has to get out. I think he and rewinded. Yes. That was huge. Living life Max on the edge. But the and take him out. Blast takes him out as mentioned. But now Hag is going to come at a cost. Blink it away. They need to keep this hag alive. As Lodestone eventually fell, by the way, in the back of an Unfortunately, Elder missed the ball lightning. Missing that, but with the other Parasite, definitely a threat, however, with the lockdown. No BKB yet, trying to fly away. And for support, here comes a Wretched Hag once again. But the Magma's done to take out the Ravenor, who could not get away in the long run. Moira falls to the Hag. And I think we're finally going to come to a conclusion of that wow, exchange that was a there. crazy long team fight. Um, I don't even know who, who came out on top of this one. I, I, I think... Team Tim, even though they lost the Kronos, they cut the lead by like 800 gold or so. I think yeah. it was once 4k. I think we mentioned it right before the fight. It was um, it was a slight advantage in that sense, yes, for the Hellborn. Yeah, and I think they maybe got one more hero kill uh, on Hellborn's side. So, Rusher getting caught mid lane actually. He's got no assistance here. This is going to be a more or less free kill, and they'll just reset and get out. Yeah, no, no teleport even needed. They just simply jumped him. And able to mm -hmm. make the kill happen. Oh, are they going to try to steal a Kongor? I just take my high ground. Um, I don't think that they'll look to do Kongor this early. Um, I don't think Ravenor is maybe the best Kongor killing hero because he deals mostly magic damage with his right clicks. But I think they're just going to be looking to keep bringing the fight to Kronos uh, uh, or to Team Tim's side rather. Well, speaking of Kronos, 30 seconds on the Kronos. So it's fair to say that this this dire, or excuse me, the Hellborn team is not looking for a fight uh, without the Kronos field being ready. But now in about 20 seconds, it will be. In fact, Imba Boy is TPing in the mid lane. They do catch Nymphora. Heal, making this take a little bit longer. I but... channel by Lodestone. I don't know if they actually want to go in here. Oh, <laughs> that was awkward. Okay, but now the Vortex. And here we go with the return. They all join the party. It's a fiesta. And a double oh, tap for no. ha 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 ha. That, that hook missing onto Magmus allowed him to get off another Lava Surge stun. And the Arcane Vortexes this game from Zane have been very, yeah. very good. I, I don't know if I've seen him have one single bad Arcane Vortex so far this game. <laughs> and it's definitely an ability that could be a little awkward to use sometimes. But no, I'm with you there. Zane is, as you would expect, let's be honest, he has been just on point with these uh, Arcane Vortexes. And yeah, it's... There's a reason why ever since this hero was created and introduced to the competitive scene that uh Can you believe this guy was a positive. position three player? It feels like he was a support player all along. <laughs> feels it's, pretty uh, natural. Playing a very well, yeah. good Moira here in, in game two. Um so Wretched Hack, she continues to just find the farm. She's five hundred and seventy gold per minute almost, so she just oh, cleared out ancients. Uh I think she just actually no, she has her Grimoire and already 2,500 gold. Seems like she just keeps pumping out gold out of nowhere. But um, what you got, isn't this, to that point though, like, I feel like she could even have 800 gold per minute. How much does that matter when you're going up against a Kronos field on the other side? You know, you know, decently I mean, far. I mean, to be forward. honest, um, it, it does matter a lot because Torture's dead. If, he's, if he's able to get disables, they can still hold the Kronos down. Uh, yeah, I missed that kill. It looks like Torture, I think similar to a couple minutes ago, he just gets caught out Maybe by himself. They just jumped and they blinked in and caught him at the tower, basically. So I don't even know if he's out of position. <laughs> they just really dove that tower. Mm -hmm. They get the tower as well, so the leads back up to almost 5k. We see the glyph come out here from Team Tim. And Doghouse, they could look to bring the pressure, but, you know, it's a very hard lineup to go high ground against when they have all their ultimates up because if you commit, with a lot of melee heroes on top of like Chronofield, Geomancer Stun, Mag Eruption, all that stuff, it's it's usually not going to go too well. So I like the decision from Doghouse here to just kind of get the glyph to be used, fall back, bring the bring the pressure, and then just reset, face the map. Well, again, they have a BKB for Ravener. Of course, a very good item now. Goes without saying. Mm -hmm. Not not going to make himself immune to Chronofield by any means, but a lot of the damage that will come out. I saw him pick up an Arcana, which means something along the lines of either Hellflower or Twin Blades, and I'm not sure what he's going to do. Uh, 
I personally don't really like Twin Blades on Ravenor, but I have seen people do that. I I feel like I would rather just see him go for uh, other damage assistant tools. Um, again, it could be a Hellflower still, which would make sense, uh, going up against a hero like Kronos and Moira and whatnot. Uh, Scorcher gets caught man. again. I, I'm I'm always rambling on uh, and I miss kills, so maybe you caught that one. But Bats actually connect on the Gym Master and he got pushed back up the cliff, but he dies to the <laughs> Antlor camp. The, the smallest camp in the game actually did enough damage to bring him down. But it's Hag still death denied though. a kill. Oh yeah, he's still gonna be dead for 40 seconds, but it does deny Hag a kill. Well, and you know, the, the biggest thing to me about those two deaths, both of them were by themselves. And this is not a this, this Hellborn team that that just can't be the case. Now we see it a awkward kind of initiation there from Magmas, even the lava surge committed, but the hook out from Devo and Wretched Ag is gonna be fine. But we're also gonna see, start seeing more of that throughout this game too, right? With the Devo sitting back, waiting for a Kronos field, Magmas initiation, whatever it is, and ideally able to hook his teammate out of those scary situations if need be. So that's that's certainly one of the big saving graces that uh, this Legion side has in Doc House. I love that we're starting to see the tablets come in from Legion, recognizing the positioning kind of team fight uh, that Hellborn has with Kronos specifically. Just being able to have multiple tablets to save each other as they're going to hook Kronos here. But Arcane Vortex is going to try to get in range. Doesn't actually use it just yet. Being very patient. Huh. Uh, yeah, I heard the sound come out, but he actually did hold off a, the cancel cast. Ends up dying. Arcane Vortex not doing the best. This is a defensive Kronos field. Kronos is just running out of here. As fast as possible. Torturer gonna get split up though. He's cut out. Okay, and also goes down. It's just when they're scattered like that, that's obviously to the that, that's not to their strength here on this uh, Hellborn side, but certainly all the uh credit due for Team Dockhouse for getting them to be as spread out as they are, taking advantage. And now they're definitely gonna push this mid lane. Yeah, and you know, we talked about Kronos just used the sphere defensively. That's not what you're gonna want to be doing if you're team Tim. You wanna use that for kills. Uh, because now Dockhouse is feeling very safe to just push this high ground. Yeah. No, th there's literally nothing they can do. The Torturer and Geomancer are dead for another 20 seconds. Uh, them jumping in would just result in their death right now. So it's kind of one of those awkward situations. If you kind of just have to wave in the background and be like, yeah, get your tower kills. All right, do your thing. Well, and then eventually. Catch here, but Nymph Zeal stuns him up on the, elute, on the forge there. But they get the racks and they don't lose anybody. This is great momentum now for Dockhouse. Well, we do see Kronos working on his own shrunken head, so that should be ready by the time another fight comes out. You talked about the possibilities here for Znuki and Ravener, who, by the way, they're doing their own Congor. It is a Twin Fangs build. Uh, twin Blaze, that is. Mm -hmm. on him, so yeah, I mean, it's gonna, with, with the Elder, it's gonna give him just the power overwhelming charges built up really fast. Um, in, that, in that regard, it's... Uh, it's not too bad. <clears throat> and that's going to be a free Congo kill. Now they're trying to respond on the Hellborn side. Oh, I thought they were doing it themselves, but no, they're just kind of in the area. They just allow for Ancients, but especially seeing that message. But again, if they were to start it now, it'd be just too late. So they just have to accept that Congo happened and hopefully they can get theirs later and maybe win a big team fight and then go do Congo could be the play. But Oh, Kronos just leaped into this camp. If they actually... Uh -oh. Come over here. Now he does have the chunk in. Team Mancer's getting caught, avoids the ball lightning. Cool Two men stun from the Magmus, but they are Ten in seconds. retreat mode. They're, Ten they're not seconds looking to take this field. fight. They need that Kodos field for this fight. They know it, so they're trying to run. Now Torture gonna get caught out. Oh, it's the, it's the Savior Man Syndrome. They just keep trying to save one another, and they die Newport, as two. They, where are they gonna go with this? Middle lane. Oh, maybe yeah. pick off the guy who defends the, the creeps? But Lozan's just going to show himself here. I'm a little bit surprised <laughs> by that. He doesn't care. Huh. That was uh, interesting. Okay. They are TPing back on the side of Team Tim. And Kronos failed rots here in the bottom lane. But maybe this is like to defend the Congor that they think is going on? We see even a, a ward get put up here. That does not show, I believe, the inside the pit, though. Uh, I could be wrong, actually, but... Yeah. Yeah, and for the Legion. not doing it anyway. So. Exactly. Like, what's the point? Why risk it against this Wombo Combo team? Even with three heroes, that's still somewhat scary. So let's just go do other objectives and keep them at their base, basically. So absolutely, I think, the right decision from Team Doghouse. You have a very comfortable lead. So, 
So while we have a lull moment here, one thing I do want to point out is the fact that Kronos had to go for a shock in this. Oh, I don't have time to talk. There's a nice hook from Devo. And they're just going to blast him down, even with... I think he got stormed. Nope, no, he stormed the Devo. Oh, he stormed the Devo. Yeah. Oh, right, because... Yeah, okay. No no so, buyback on the Kronos. This is no buy actually that's a it. massive kill. I think we're going game three at 1-1 one, one at this point. Yep, there we go. Disconnects already coming out, so GG well played. That's how it will finish, but really, it just credit to Doghouse. They, 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 split up, uh, they split up Team Tim quite a bit, especially in the mid-game there.